That was an excerpt of a Fifth Estate documentary called Lost in the Struggle. Most of it was shot by two filmmakers who grew up in the Jane and Finch area themselves and went to the same high school as Jordan Manners. Mark Sims and Paul Nguyen join us tonight to talk about the neighborhood and the shooting. Paul, what, what are you hearing about what actually happened to well, Jordan? The word on the street is, you know, it, it, uh, the situation erupted because of a firecracker war. And uh, I mean, which is the uh, kids, they would buy firecrackers during the, you know, during the holidays. And basically they would shoot off firecrackers off at each other. And this is something that I know Mark has done in the past. And uh, maybe he can elaborate on that. Yeah, what are you hearing, Mark? Well, uh, like a lot of people are saying that it, it involves a firecracker. Uh, but I, I still stand by the fact that it doesn't matter about what happened. I think uh, I think the point is is that someone was was killed, and that the community needs to come together in order to help each other to to get through this. And I think that uh, a lot of the press being in the area is not helping, because uh, it's just bringing more confusion to, to to my community, to my village. And I think that a lot of the community, a lot of the uh, reporters and and news media vehicles that we have outside G Jeffries needs to leave in order to get a lot of the students back into the school to get them to learn so that they don't end up in the same predicament that these two were ended up ended up in uh, yesterday. But how does something like a like a prank get blown up into a a, a kid dead from a gunshot? Well, I think that uh, it's just the way how society is right now. We're not really teaching these kids to handle their conflict and they're. Uh, we're not teaching them how to talk with each other. Everyone wants to wants to fight. You you huh. guys both went to this school, Paul. Like apparently, this the mom Jordan's mom sent sent him to that school because she thought he'd actually be safer there. That was a good school. I went to that school, and I had a I had my greatest teacher was Mr. Clark from that school. And Paul, and you I went actually, there too. I actually yes, I did. Uh, Jeffries is actually you know. A, known as a prestigious art school in the area and I had order... to apply to CW Jeffries you couldn't just go to CW Jeffries a lot of people are trying to make it out to seem as though that CW Jeffries is a bad school I love that school and I stand by that school I had some of my best teachers at CW Jeffries so Paul I guess this happening I mean this is not going to be very good for the reputation of the neighborhood or or the school are, are people scared I think people who don't have an understanding of the area or who are buying into the, the media, the sen sensationalism, will get that image, get that picture. You know, all the news vans and being repeated over and over, and you see the SWAT guys, you know, entering the school. I mean, my time there at Jeffries was nothing like that at all. I mean, it was very peaceful. It was a great learning environment, and it was a, a great place to grow there. And I think just these images being repeated on television a thousand times, it will play a part in the public's perception of Jeffries, but I, I hope that it, they don't believe that because Jeffries is a really, it's a really good school to go to. And my, Mark, uh, my fondest memories of Jordan, sorry, I just want to leave off. Yeah. My fondest memories of Jordan was uh, I met him three years ago when I used to work at a gym at uh, York University. I was a personal trainer and Jordan and a bunch of his friends used to sneak into the gym to work out during summertime. And I would always let them work out. Sometimes I would even help personal train them because I knew that they were coming to the gym because they had nothing else to do. They're they were just trying to keep off of the yeah. streets. That's the man who Jordan is. His mom today was saying, my son was not a gang member. He was a good kid. Was he? Well, I mean, you think about his mom. His mom is the, is the mother Teresa of Jane and Finch. What do you mean? Well, she, she helps anyone. It doesn't matter if you're from PEI or Vancouver, or British Columbia, or the Yukon, she will help you. She will take the shirt off of her back, and she will help you. Was he she will involved feed in, you. Was he involved in bad stuff, or just a normal kid? In bad stuff? Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm trying to tell you. He was not involved in bad stuff. He just got caught up in something. It, it, it was a mistake. That's what it was. It was a mistake. It wasn't the fact that he got caught up in something. If you think about it, this involves a firecracker. What, who uses firecrackers? Kids. This wasn't drug-related, gang-related. This was conflict-related. This was poverty-related. That's what this was. All the politicians, Paul, today are saying the answer is gun control? Uh, I think, I think uh, they shouldn't play the blame game. You can't single out you know, one factor. You know, guns is, can play a role, but it's not the only problem. It's not the only issue at hand. 
And I mean, a lot of kids need attention, and we need to give you know more money back into the education system. Have teachers spend more time with these kids and teach them you know conflict resolution, how to control their anger, how to talk, and basically you know resolve conflict. Well, you guys obviously love your neighborhood. Thanks for coming and uh, fighting for it tonight, and and uh, and I hope things get better. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.